These are some paper two questions from the CAPE Unit 2 2019 paper. The first question says, list three environmentally sustainable agricultural practices other than conservation tillage and post-harvest management. You can use integrated pest management, hydroponics, aquaponics, crop rotation, permaculture, the whole nine yards. Next question, agriculture plays a number of important roles in the Caribbean region. Explain any two roles which agriculture play in the Caribbean. Come on, guys, think about this. We reside in the Caribbean. We are seeing what agriculture is doing for our respective Caribbean countries. If you're in Jamaica, you're seeing that the banana, the coconut industries, they're doing quite well. If you're in Guyana, you're seeing what the rice is doing. If you're in Barbados, you're seeing what the... That should tell you that agriculture plays a big role in the Caribbean. Number one role is providing a livelihood for farmers and income for farmers. So the agricultural sector is one of the main sources of employment in the Caribbean countries. You need labor to grow the crops and rear the animals. Thus, agricultural sector provides direct and indirect employment opportunities and you'd begin to expound on that secondly foreign exchange most of our agricultural goods that we produce in our caribbean countries we do export them sometimes as raw materials and sometimes as value-added product and that contributes to our total foreign exchange income per year and per country. And I also give you an additional one if you want to use it. Agriculture also contributes to the gross domestic product of the respective countries in the Caribbean. Non agriculture needs to be sustainable in order to fulfill these important roles. Explain how conservation, tillage, and post harvest management work to enable sustainable agriculture. So as stated before, these two, conservation tillage and post-harvest management, they are sustainable agricultural practices. With conservation tillage, you are carrying out minimal tillage of the ground that leaves sufficient crop residues to cover the soil surface by at least 30%. That should tell you something. If you retain crop residue on the soil, that's going to provide a cover to the soil that can reduce wind and water erosion, runoff, or particulate matter and nutrient loss. And that is good. That is actually sustainable. You can also reduce the amount of tillage that you do to the land area. And this in turn enhances the soil aggregation, promote biological activities, increase the water holding capacity and infiltration rates. And this is sustainable. Post-harvest management now. So as the name suggests, post-harvest management it's a system of handling, storing, and transporting agricultural goods after harvest. And you might say, why is this a sustainable practice? Well, with sustainable post-harvest management, you can reduce post-harvest losses, which can increase the food availability to the growing population and decrease the area needed for production, thus overall conserving our natural resources. And that makes our Caribbean countries more efficient and limits the use of energy and non-renewable resources. And it also contributes to our food security. Moving on. List three features 
of sustainable agriculture. Now, since they say list, I'm not going to go into details, but you know, you can always ask me this. Three features are ecological integrity, social integrity, and economic viability. All right, moving on. A number of factors can threaten the availability of a country's farmers to practice sustainable agriculture. Explain how certification to meet international standards and the importation of cheap agricultural products can impact sustainable agriculture. In your response, include a clear reference to the feature of sustainable agriculture threatened by each. Let's start with importation of cheap agricultural products. And products can mean anything here. It can refer to agricultural goods like the importation of red onions and red cabbages. It can literally mean agrochemicals and, and so forth. So when we import these cheap agricultural products, that actually lowers our food security. What happens if one day we can no longer source these agricultural products? We are not self-sufficient. Importation of cheap agricultural products also lowers productivity and poses a foreign exchange risk. Now, secondly, certification to meet international standards. Now, this is a challenge in the Caribbean, especially for rural farmers. Sometimes these certifications... They are costly and you know these farmers are, are already not making enough money. So the expensive certification and certification courses is a con right there. Some of these standards, they are difficult for the farmers, especially in the rural areas, to meet. And then again, if they can't meet these standards, then they're going to miss out on a lot of things especially things that are beneficiary to them. The last part of this question says, define the term energy. This is a one more question. It is so easy. Energy is the capacity to do work. 